Hi, in this video we're gonna start to create our React app and we're gonna get create React app to scaffold all the boilerplate needed to run our application. But before we do anything, I wanna show you something. So um, I didn't emphasize enough the point of why we had to write all the backend in cloud functions instead of using the Firebase client uh, library. So this is basically our, uh, event, our eventual bundle, our complete project bundle. And um, this is by the way, a tool called Source Map Explorer that you can use to see which packages are uh, have which size in your bundle. And I'm using it to uh, look at the final bundle of our application, which will be uh, 457 kilobytes in size. And as you see here, material, material UI has 171 kilobytes from that. And the rest are all necessary stuff that we need. So this is the bare minimum that you we can use to actually have the full functionality of our application uh, work properly. And if we compare this to something like this, which is a project I worked on before that uh, has very minimal uh, functionality actually, but uses the uh, Firebase library um, uh, implementation, Firebase client library to actually access the Firebase uh, database and uh, perform operations on there. If you notice, this package is 907, uh, this bundle is 907 kilobytes, which is double the first one. And Firebase alone is, almost 500 kilobytes of that. And stuff like React uh, Redux Firebase is 60 kilobytes. So you see how using Firebase on the client can inflate the size of the bundle by a lot. And this is important for many, many reasons of which uh, you can use services that charge you with uh, by bandwidth, like a most notably AWS um, S3. Uh, so you will get charged more because your users will request bigger chunks of data. Second is if you're shipping your single page application to slower mobile devices, they will have to unpack this massive JavaScript bundle. And and by the way, this project doesn't even have a material UI and, and the other stuff that we're using in our project. So this will be more than one megabyte, which is, um, which is kind of a lot for a React app that uh, of this scale. So yeah, I just wanted to show you this quickly. All right, so let's actually start to create our application. In the desktop here, I'm gonna open up Git Bash. And if you don't have Create React App installed, you can just, uh, of course you have npm installed, I'm assuming. You can just run npm install dash g create dash react app. I already have it, so I can just run create react app, and then the name of the directory will be uh, social ape-client. Now this is gonna take some time, so I'll be back once it's done. All right, now that it's done installing, we can cd into it. So cd social ape dash, uh, what do we call it, client, yeah. Okay, let me open it in VS Code by running code dot. All right, so create React app comes, uh, ships a, uh, a webpack development server that's already configured for us. So we can just run npm start and it will start our app. Actually, let me open it up here. All right, so this is our app right now, nothing fancy. Let's clean up the, um, the stuff. We don't need this logo, so we can just delete the logo. So let's delete this. Actually, I need this font family uh, thing from here. I'm just going to delete this file. Let's go to app CSS, let's delete everything. But here I want to keep that font uh, family thing just in case the user doesn't have the Roboto font, which is the main font that Material UI will use. So let's go to index.js uh, and remove index.css from it. Let's go to our app.js, remove that logo because we deleted it. And here I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna have a header one that says our app. All right, let's save all files. All right, cool, our app. Let's, um, I wanna change the icon here and change the name of the app. Uh, I already have the icon downloaded, but I'll post a link uh, to this in the description. 
So if you go to our app public, we paste it there and we delete this uh, favorite icon thing. And uh, let's go to public index HTML and change fav ico to icon.png or whatever you named it. I named it that. And change the title here to social ape. Let's save. Let's go back and everything is changed. Cool. All right. So here in the source folder, there are a couple of conventions of, on how to group your components. I'm going to have two folders, one that's called pages for the actual pages. We're not going to have a lot of pages. It's going to be like five of them. And here we're going to have components. So I'm going to put, I'm going to create three pages for now. So home.js and the pages uh, I'm going to have with lowercase, um, with camel case, I'm going to, they're going to start with a lowercase uh, letter, basically. So I'm going to have home.js, login.js, and signup.js. All right, so here, because uh, remember, guys, I'm using ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets extension. I'm just going to, sorry for reading the whole name. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> just going to do RCE. So this is a class-based component, and it's already exported for us. And here I'm going to have a header one that says home page. Uh, let's copy the whole thing, go to login and change this to control D, control D and do login and then paste here and then do control D, control D, login or lowercase login. Oops, no, this is sign up. What am I doing? Sign up. Cool. Save everything. Let's go to app.js and here uh, I I already want to install uh, React Router DOM so that we can have our different pages in different uh, routes. So I'm going to open up a new command line, um, a new terminal, and say, whoa, it's bugged. Okay, let's do npm install dash dash save react dash router dash DOM. Let's hit enter. And while that installs, let me create a component here, the good old navbar. Can't have a website without a navbar, can you? All right, so let's do RCE here, even though we're not going to use it yet. And here in the home, or in the app rather, let me close the index HTML, the app CSS, the index CSS, we don't need these. So here in the app, uh, okay, that's done installing. Let's import a couple of things from um, from React Router DOM. So we have browser router, we have oh, router, we have switch and route. Well, my OCD is telling me to sort them alphabetically. <laughs> so these are from React Router DOM, if I can spell correctly. <laughs> All right. So for React Router DOM to work, or for the router to work, we have to wrap everything here in a router, um, in the router um, component. Actually, let me name it router, because that makes more sense. So as browser router as router. And here I'm going to put our routes, but we're going to need to put a switch, not not the JavaScript switch, but the component switch. Close this and then put our routes here. So the first route will be the home route. And this will be two, not two, sorry, path equals slash. And this will have a component, which we haven't brought up yet, brought in yet, of home. So this is the home page and let's bring them. Let's say here, pages and let's bring our pages. So import home from slash pages slash home. Let me copy this two more times. And here select this control D and do login and sign up. And actually this will be exact. So it will be exactly this path. So if we add something here, it's not it's not that path. Let me copy this spaced it two more times and this will be to slash login the component will be login and this will be to slash sign up 
and the component will be sign up. All right, let's save everything and let's see if this is working. So we get a home page here and we type slash, we get home page again. Slash login should give us the login page and it does. And slash sign up gives us the sign up page. Now, obviously, we want some sort of like navigation bar here with those links. We don't want to type them here each time. So we're going to install material UI right now. So let's do npm install dash dash save at material dash UI slash core. Now, um, you can go to material material dash UI dot com. They have really good documentation and here you can go to actually get started and it will tell you to install it. And if you want to link it with, um, through HTML, no, actually this is the font and any component you want to use, you go to component API or component demos rather. And in this case, we're going to use the app bar, which is the nav bar technically. And yeah, so you can take any of their examples. You click on show the source and you actually get uh, the source code and how to use these uh, nav bars. But the way I'm going to, I want to use the nav bar is different to all their implementations. So I'm actually going to do it manually right now. But there are certain things where I'm going to copy some code so, so that I don't waste time. All right, so material UI has been installed. Let's go to um, nav bar. And here we need to bring it, uh, bring app bar and a couple of other things. So we're going to have a lot of imports in our file. So I want to put some comments on our imports so that we can navigate them easily. So here I'm going to do MUI stuff, which is material UI. So here I'm going to const, oh, not const. Forgot this is ES6. All right, so uh, import app bar from uh, material no, actually at material, material UI slash core slash app bar. Now we could actually app bar we like this. Now we could actually um, group all our imports like this. For example, if we're going to need now something called tool bar and just do this. This would work. But this is not good uh, practice right now because we're going to need to do something called tree shaking where we import each module alone. Plus the problem with uh, doing stuff like this is that each time you run your app, it's importing the whole uh, framework and it's going to make your compile time a bit slower. So we're actually going to do uh, the practice they actually recommend. So just do app bar and here slash core slash app bar. And if we were to go back to the documentation page and expand any of them, you notice that every app bar needs a toolbar inside and then you have your um, buttons inside of that. So let's go here and let's import the toolbar. Let me just copy this actually and then select this control D and do toolbar. Where's the bar actually? Is the B capital? No, it's just toolbar like that. Okay. So here for our navbar, we're going to need to do return like this, um, app bar. I'm going to want, I want to have it fixed at the top. So let's do position fixed. And by the way, if you're wondering how I know that there is this thing called position, um, here, you can just on any, on any element, you could just scroll down and you will see the API reference, or you can go to component API and pick your component. And if we would go to app bar here, it will show us that these are all the properties that this component can take and the values that they take. So I'm using right now position and uh, these are the values you can have. And uh, actually the default value is fixed. So I shouldn't even type that. <laughs> all right. I learned something right now. So I should just leave it like this because that's the default value. So let's do toolbar. And here, uh, what do I need to do? Actually, there's nothing right now. I'm just going to leave it like that. And I want to put some buttons inside. And for this, I'm going to bring in button from material UI. And it's not actually a hundred kilobytes. This, uh, import cost, uh, extension sometimes doesn't calculate the size properly. Okay. So here we'll say button and this has a property color. Um, I'm going to do in, I'm going to give it inherit and 
and button actually can take some this is this is a uh, can be a higher order component and you, you can pass it a component a different component and then pass it the properties of those components and then you will have that component as a child so what i'm talking about you can right now just say button and let's say to what is this this is login and then let's paste this two more times and then say home and then this would be sign up and let's save let's go to our app now what we want in our application is that we want the navbar to be at the top and then the navbar never changes it's only the content of the page that changes so this navbar right here is not going to go inside the switch it's going to be outside of course it's still going to be in the router but it's going to be right here so let's say nav bar and let's actually bring it in say components and let's do import nav bar from components slash nav bar let's save let's go to our app and there we go we have our nav bar and we have our buttons but the text is gone because it's actually behind the nav bar so let, let's give our let's make this section that's got the text a container like a bootstrap container if you used that before so let's go in the actually actually i'm gonna go to the global css file app.css let's do dot container this class and I want to give it so I want to give the container margin top so that uh, the top content doesn't hide behind the nav bar. So actually, just do margin, and then here let's say so the way margin works, you can uh, you can give four uh, numbers. You can give one or which applies to all. You can give two values which apply to top and bottom and left and right, and then you can give four. So the first one will be top and then it goes clockwise, right, bottom, and then left. So here I'm gonna do 80 for top, not 20, 80. And then for um, for right, I'm gonna give it auto. For bottom, I'm gonna give it zero. And then for left, I'm gonna give it auto so that it, it actually stays in the middle by giving it auto. I'm gonna give it a max width of 1200 pixels so that it's actually kind of pushed to the middle. All right, so let's save that. But we need to give this class to something. I think, what do I surround with? Do I surround? I think I'm gonna surround the whole thing. So let's copy the, uh, cut that and then do dot container and then put our stuff here. Let's look here. All right, cool. Actually, the navbar shouldn't be in the container. So the navbar should be outside, like this. All right, uh, but our buttons right now don't do anything. So let's go to the navbar here. Like I said earlier, we can pass it a component, and here we need the uh, the link component from React Router DOM. We can do import link from React dash Router dash DOM. And here we're using tree shaken as well, so we're importing only that component. So here, let's take the link. Let's do. Let's write in all of these fields, and let's do component equals link. And here we can actually pass the properties of the component link, and it will be under the button. So in in a way, it's like actually putting it here, but it looks cleaner. So here, let's do. So the link needs a two property. And for login, it's gonna be two slash login. For home, it's gonna be two slash, to just slash. <laughs> and for sign up, it's gonna be two uh, slash sign up. So we save, and then we go to our app. And there we go. So if we click on our buttons, it actually takes us to those pages. Cool. Let's bring these buttons to the middle. Um, how do we, let's give this toolbar a class name of uh, nav-container 
And let's go to our CS, uh, CSS, app CSS, and do nav dash uh, container. And we're just going to have margin auto. Let's save, save everything. Let's go, and there we go, our buttons are in the middle. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna keep this video short, so uh, I'm gonna finish here, and then in the next video, I'm gonna start to set up the actual theme. I don't wanna use this basic um, blue, I wanna change the color to something I want. So we're gonna use uh, themes, and we're gonna actually have some markup in our pages. So look forward to that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.